Wild bovids occupy vast areas of the globe. They are found in Africa, Asia, Europe, and North America, but none is found in South America. With a land connection to its northern equivalent, it is surprising that South America has no wild bovids living there. So why is this? Here we try to answer that very question. Bovids are a wide variety of cloven-hoofed ruminants. They are herbivores, using their four-chambered stomach and its microbes to break down plant matter. The cloven hoof means that their feet are split into two distinct toes. Bovids include cattle, sheep, goats, bison, buffalo, and antelope. But they exclude other ruminants like deer, elk, moose, giraffe, ari, and pronghorn, to name a few. While South America has millions of domestic cattle, they don't have any wild bovids. The domesticated cattle of the Americas were brought over by the Spanish from both Spain and parts of Africa. Christopher Columbus reportedly released a small number of cattle on the Caribbean islands. They did so well on the island of Hispaniola that not long after they arrived, they were considered a nuisance. By 1525, these cattle were being farmed across Central and South America. They were paving a new way of agriculture, forcing out old traditions and introducing a new way of life. As the European settlers spread through the continent, they found that there were no wild bovids to compete with. Bison, wild sheep like bighorn, and wild goats like mountain goats thrive in North America, but none live on the southern continent. They never made it much further south than Mexico. But how did they get to North America in the first place? They weren't native to the northern continent, and they certainly weren't shipped there from other parts of the world. North America's wildlife wasn't always unique to its borders. That's because North America wasn't always as isolated as its southern equivalent. During the last ice age, North America was connected to Asia via the Bering Land Bridge. Asia, in turn, has always been connected to Europe. The land bridge allowed for Asiatic species, including humans, to migrate into North America. Bighorn sheep made the journey 750,000 years ago, and bison followed between 195,000 and 135,000 years ago. When the Ice Age came to an end around 10,000 years ago, the ice sheets and glaciers melted, the sea levels rose, and the land bridge disappeared underwater, trapping those who had made the journey in North America. These species adapted to their new home and spread throughout the continent to become the species we associate with America today. So why didn't the bovids of North America make it to the south? North and South America were joined together at this time. The completion of the Panama Land Bridge formation occurred around 3 million years ago, allowing species to travel between the two continents. There was an incredible event called the Great American Biotic Interchange, during which species crossed between the North and the South. During this time, species from North America such as horses, camels and bears moved South, while species from South America like armadillos, opossums and porcupines moved North. This led to the demise and extinction of many species and the diversification of others. But the Great American Biotic Interchange happened when the Panama Land Bridge first formed almost 3 million years ago, and bovids hadn't made it to North America by then, so there was no way for them to make it into South America during the Biotic Interchange. But what has stopped them in more recent times? Nowadays, there are geographical barriers preventing bovids and many other animals from crossing into South America. Although bison were once a common sight in Mexico, and have now been reintroduced there since their earlier demise due to overhunting, they are unlikely to migrate further south. This is largely due to the Darien Gap. Despite providing a land bridge between Panama and Colombia, it is considered one of the most inhospitable places in the world. Its thick, dense jungle, treacherous terrain, and extreme environment make it a formidable barrier for anyone or anything wanting to cross through it. Although some of North America's wild bovids live in the southern states, there is no incentive for them to migrate into dense jungles. Bison primarily graze on open grasslands, eating grasses and sedges, 
and would struggle to survive in dense jungles that they wouldn't seek out as a natural habitat. North America's bighorn sheep live in the cold mountains of Canada and the northern states, except for the desert bighorn sheep subspecies, which thrive in the hot deserts of the southwestern states and Mexico. Half of the world's mountain goat population lives in British Columbia, with others inhabiting the high altitudes of North America's mountainous regions. None of these species would do well in the Darien Gap, and with 60 miles of dense rainforest to navigate before making it into South America, migration seems unlikely. The bovids of North America are typically adapted to colder and drier conditions. The climate of the Darien Gap is tropical rainforest, one of the wettest regions in the world, with high humidity and temperatures reaching 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. As far as animal migrations into South America go, there has been another way that avoids the Darien Gap entirely, crossing the open ocean. This is how scientists believe the New World monkeys made it into South America. When storms hit coastlines of mainland Africa, large chunks of land and vegetation gave way. Any animals in those trees or bushes were swept out to sea on their own vegetation raft. Unbelievable as it may seem, these rafts crossed the Atlantic Ocean and landed on the shores of South America. Back then, the Atlantic wasn't as wide as it is today, so the journey would have been quicker, although no less perilous. This drifting island phenomenon is more common than you might think and has occurred elsewhere in the world. Obviously, in this day and age, the likes of bison and bighorn sheep are unlikely to make this kind of open ocean navigation. However, with a changing world and the climate and destruction of natural resources, North America's bovids could begin migrating to more habitable lands. At the moment, the Darien Gap doesn't seem penetrable for these bovids, but that could change in the years to come. If the climate becomes unsuitable for them in North America and the habitats that they rely on dry up, they will have no choice but to disperse and search for more appropriate areas. The Darien Gap, although mountainous and treacherous, could be destroyed through commercial activities such as logging, whereby large sections of the jungle are cut down and destroyed. This is currently something that is happening right now. Deforestation for wood and mining is eating away at the jungle and the wildlife that live within it. If the gap was completely destroyed, this would open up possible routes for migrating animals. Destruction of the rainforest would likely reduce the humidity in the area, making it more acceptable for North America's bovids. Already, there has been an interchange of species using the Darien Gap to expand their range. The North American coyote has been recorded venturing into the very northern tip of South America, and its counterpart, the crab-eating fox from South America, has been found as far north as Panama. However, there is no guarantee that North American bovids would survive in South America, even if they did make it there. The ecological niche is already occupied by the native camelids, including the vicuña, guanaco, alpaca, and llama. Of these, only the vicuña and guanaco are wild camelids. Alpacas and llamas have been domesticated for thousands of years and are predominantly used for their fur and meat. Guanacos are adapted to living in harsh environments, namely the mountainous South American regions and the Atacama Desert, where it hasn't rained for 50 years. Vicuñas feed on very poor quality grass on the grassy plains of the Andes Mountains, but move to the slopes at nighttime. When the Europeans settled in South America and brought their domestic livestock with them, they hoped the locals would be forced to switch to their way of farming. Traditionally, the South American farm llamas were herders, regularly driving their alpacas and llamas to new pastures. The arrival of non-native livestock increased the risk of spreading new diseases to the native animals. European settlements also destroyed forests to give way to open grazing grasslands and fields, which were plowed up to make way for arable farming. New crops were grown in favor of the traditional ones used by native South Americans. Monoculture farming spread and new farming techniques and machinery were introduced to the land. This shaped South America. Wild bovids migrated into North America via the Bering Land Bridge, but they never made it into South America due to the unfavorable climatic conditions and the physical barrier of the rainforest spanning the border of Panama and Colombia. 
a changing climate and the destruction of impenetrable habitats could open up corridors in which species could more easily migrate between North and South America, including, of course, the wild bovids. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.